In this lecture, we're going to cover internal consistency reliability. So in human resource management, we often focus on three types of reliability. Inter-rater reliability, which has to do with the consistency between two or more raters in terms of how they're rating a common person or object. Test-retest reliability, which has to do with the consistency in a group of people's test scores from one administration to another administration of the same or a very similar test. And then finally, internal consistency reliability. So what is internal consistency reliability? Well, to quote, Schultz and Whitney, it's a reliability estimate based on the intercorrelation or homogeneity among items on a test, with Chromebox Alpha being a prime example. So more simply put, it's essentially the degree to which all the items are strongly correlated with each other, and an internal consistency reliability estimate gives us a single value or amount or indicator in terms of how consistent these different items are on a particular measure or how consistent scores are on these variables and do they seem to represent the same thing? So to bring this forward conceptually, let's consider the example of what a bad or inconsistent survey item or measure item might actually look. So let's take a look at this correlation matrix here, where let's imagine we have four items. Perhaps these four items are extroversion items as part of a personality inventory, where scores on these are employees' responses to each, each particular item using a strongly disagree to strongly agree response format that ranges from one to five respectively. And so let's take a look at this correlation matrix. We're just gonna look at the bottom diagonal here because obviously the upper diagonal is not available. So first notice that you have on the diagonal values of 1.00. And so what this shows is that every item is perfectly correlated with itself. So scores on one, item one will be perfectly score, correlated with scores on item one. So this follows, it makes sense, an item will be perfectly correlated with itself. That's not very meaningful to us. What's really meaningful to us are the correlations that fall below that diagonal. And so here you can see, for instance, that item one is correlated with item two at 0.72. This is a pretty strong correlation here, especially for survey items. And then we can see item one just below it is correlated with item three at 0.35. This is not so strong of a relationship here. And then item one, still going down that same first column, is correlated with item four at 0.79, much more strongly related. So if you look across this, what you'll notice is that there's something about item three. Item three doesn't seem to be very highly correlated with item one, item two, or item four. And you can see the values of 0.35, 0 0.40, and 0.25 respectively in terms of the correlation coefficients. Now, we see that the other items are correlated with each other at 0.72 or higher. And so what this is showing here conceptually is that there's something off about item three. It, this is, these items are supposed to be measuring extroversion, but whatever item three is measuring doesn't seem to be consistent with what the other items are measuring because it's not as highly correlated. And it could be that maybe it's measuring conscientiousness or some other personality dimension. And so this is to bring about what conceptually is happening with internal consistency reliability. When we talk about Chromebox Alpha, which is a specific indicator of internal consistency reliability that's commonly used in human resource management in the context of surveys and assessing the internal consistency of different survey measures and the items within them, we can see here that it's a good way of understanding the across intercorrelations, across all of these different correlations of these different items and their scores, are there consistency? Are they strongly related with one another to the point where you could say these are consistent and um, homogeneous in terms of probably tapping into the same thing or at least consistently tapping into whatever it is it's tapping into. So in terms of internal consistency reliability, often we like to create an overall scale score for employees that represents their overall level of whatever we are trying to measure on a survey, for instance. So let's say we're trying to assess their job satisfaction, and there's three job satisfaction items they responded to using a strongly disagree to strongly agree response format, where strongly disagree is one, strongly agree is five. And let's say that the first item is something like, in general, I am satisfied with my job, and someone might put five for strongly agree. Now, in this case, we want to understand, okay, are these three items for job satisfaction, are they internally consistent with each other? Do they seem to be representing the same thing? Are they homogeneous, in other words? So the next thing that we want to think about is, 
Typically, we compute the mean for a set of related items to serve as the overall score for each employee. So instead of looking just at the employee's response to item one for job satisfaction, for item two for job satisfaction, and for item three for job satisfaction, we actually want to get an overall estimate typically of their job satisfaction, where job satisfaction is the concept or construct of interest. But prior to computing the mean or sometimes the sum of those items to represent that overall scale score for each person, we should determine whether or not those items across our sample are internally consistent using an estimate of internal consistency reliability. And Chromebox Alpha is one of the more common ways that we can do this, or common ways we can estimate that internal consistency reliability. So, Chromebox Alpha can be used to assess internal consistency reliability when the items are continuous. In other words, they have an interval or ratio measurement scale. Now, if the items are dichotomous or binary, like yes, no, true, false, or so forth, the Cooter-Richardson or the KR coefficient of equivalence is going to be more appropriate. Now, alpha can range from 0.00 to 1.00, and this is specifically Chromebox alpha. This is different than when you think of a p-value, the alpha level, okay? So it can be a little bit confusing with the different Greek um, notations that they use. So alpha in this instance refers to Chromebox alpha, and it can range from 0.0 to 1. 1 would be perfect internal consistency. 0 would be basically no internal consistency. So what is good internal consistency on Chromebox alpha? Well, these are not hard set rules, but these are good quantitative descriptors of Chromebox alpha across different levels that you might find. So starting with the bottom, if you find a Chromebox Alpha that is 0.0 to let's say 0.59, that's just going to be unacceptable. It's, there's not much internal consistency. It might be that you can drop an item and the remaining items will be more consistent. If you exclude the one that's inconsistent, that can help bump up your Chromebox Alpha. Or it just might be that you just designed a really poor measure or you're using a really poor measure of whatever construct. Now when you get to that 0.6 to 0.69 range, this is where things are questionable. Generally, there's something that probably needs to be changed about the scale, and you probably shouldn't use whatever measure and its associated items as is. You might need to drop an item, or you might need to just go and redesign the measure itself, or for whatever reason, maybe with this sample of people, this measure wasn't, people didn't respond to it in the way that you would think they would respond to it. Now, when we get to 0.7 Chromebox Alpha and higher, this is where we get to kind of the ex conventional acceptable range. So 0.7 or higher is generally considered internally consistent enough to actually use um, at the, to create, the, use those items to create an overall scale score or to treat those items as representing the same thing. Now, if we get to 0.8 to 0.9, we usually would add, well, these are good. This is good level of internal consistency. 0.9 to 0.94, we'd say, this is pretty great. And 0.95 to 1.0, we would say, well, this is excellent internal consistency reliability. But again, 0.7 or higher is generally our cutoff there. Now, Again, this is to signal how the quality or the consistency of those items in terms of whether or not they are homogeneous um, or homogeneous in nature. And so we want to think very carefully about what items we put into this measure, and we should only put items in that are theoretically supposed to be tapping into the same concept or construct. So if we're interested in um, assessing the internal consistency of a measure of job satisfaction, we'd only want to assess those items that we've already determined are supposed to tap into job satisfaction and not in, add in organizational commitment, engagement, or other types of items that conceptually or theoretically would be distinct. So one other thing to consider when it comes to Chromebox Alpha as an indicator or an estimate of internal consistency reliability is that when the number of items is large, Chromebox Alpha as an indicator of reliability will tend to be higher. Okay? So this is generally something that's good. This is why we often don't want to use single item measures of a, of a construct. Theoretically, we don't want to do that because this is a, a single item is unlikely to tap into a more complex construct or concept. Often we need multiple items to capture more of that nuance. But statistically speaking, the more items we have, the more likely that we're going to have a higher level of reliability. And because internal consistency reliability estimates like Chromebox Alpha is an indicator of reliability, it means that the more items, the higher Chromebox Alpha will tend to be. Now, this is something to be used cautiously, too. That doesn't mean add in all the items you can. Well, one, too many items leads to, to survey fatigue or to measure and respondent fatigue. But also, the second thing being that the, when the number of items approaches 20, as found in a study by Jose Cortina, as published in 1993, 
Chromebox Alpha levels may actually remain acceptable, so 0.7 or higher, even when the items are not that consistent with each other or there's some heter heterogeneity there. So try to avoid making measures that are 20 items or more because often you can, even if something's relatively nuanced and complex, you can probably get away with using fewer items. And this is where factor analysis would come in to, to try to determine which items are really the best items to retain that still cover the construct space while not being redundant with one another. So along those lines, when your goal is to assess the underlying dimensionality of a test or a measure with multiple items, exploratory factor analysis and or confirmatory factor analysis are going to be most appropriate for doing that. Because Chromebox Alpha doesn't necessarily mean that there is just one, if it's high, it means that there's just one dimension, but it can be an indicator of that. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. If you're really interested in whether or not there's multiple dimensions that underlie these different items that you've collected data on, that's where you'd use some type of factor analysis, whether it's exploratory or confirmatory in nature. So that wraps up the lecture on internal consistency reliability.